no one could have imagined that at first we were just investigating the ordinary disappearance of stray cats. The Lord of all laws said so, about this book, a pure, retro sword and magical world, without fighting spirit. There are no martial souls or other miscellaneous things. There is also no technology to strike magic. Finally, no Cthulhu. Keywords of the novel. Mage's rules of making friends. No pop-ups, Mage's rules of making friends. Download the complete TXT collection, and read the latest chapters of Mage's rules of making friends. 1. Chapter 1. Starting from an inconspicuous tavern. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1. Starting from an inconspicuous tavern in this world, the beginning of most adventures is in some inconspicuous tavern. Master Apprentice Wang is now walking into such a tavern. As soon as he entered the door, he smelled the sour smell of leather armor that had been worn for a long time and had been soaked in sweat. Even the pungent gas produced by the burning of inferior tobacco could not cover up this smell. The smell of flaxseed oil, which is used to maintain weapons, is not as impressive. Compared to the smell, the furnishings in the tavern are relatively lackluster. The animal bones that looked like some kind of goat were hanging on the wall, decorated with pumpkin lanterns that were forgotten to be removed during the last winter curtain festival. The old round shield seemed to indicate that the owner of the tavern had also been active as a mercenary. But now, the owner of the tavern is standing behind the counter, propping up the counter with both hands and carefully scrutinizing the newly entered mage apprentice. Warlock, he said, it's best not to play your tricks in my tavern. We don't welcome jugglers here. Wang frowned and said, I am a wizard. It doesn't make much difference to us, the boss shrugged. Wang. There's a big difference. Warlocks use the power of their bloodline to cast spells, while we use knowledge. As I said, it doesn't make much difference to us. Are you a disciple of the master who came to visit the duke today? The young wizard apprentice frowned and showed a puzzled expression. Um. Master. Which master? My teacher is still hiding in the tower. Grand master of the palace, I don't know about this. It seems like you're a wild person. The boss took out an oak cup and poured a whole glass of honey beer. With a gentle push, the cup slid down the table in front of the young master apprentice. Wang picked up his glass of wine, but did not drink. Is this? For me. Yeah, spellcasters are a hot potato in the mercenary squad. You just said you don't welcome jugglers. That's two different things. There are often some little rabbits who have learned a little bit of fur from somewhere, pretending to be spellcasters everywhere, but in reality, they only emit a few flashes. Wang. Flash magic. Even in magic, it is the lowest level and easy to learn. Sometimes, even if you don't need to understand magic, as long as you learn to extract white phosphorus, people who are completely ignorant of magic can perform it. The boss laughed heartily. Wang. However, I haven't talked about my casting ability, nor have I cast any spells. How can you be sure that I'm not a juggler? Dot. After a brief silence, the boss spoke up, because I know that mages will have a fatal difference in temperament after mastering the six ring spell. Mages before mastering the six rings always appear cautious and cautious. They may appear relaxed on the surface, but they cannot deceive the eyes of knowledgeable bar owners. And mages who master the six rings will definitely prepare a spell as their final trump card, so they look more calm and composed. You must be clearer than me. Wang. Trigger spell, six ring spell. Even mages who have just mastered six rings can store a four ring spell through trigger spell, and powerful mages can store five or six ring spells. In case of an accident, they can immediately activate this stored spell to save their lives. The boss calmly changed his address and said, You really understand. Wang noticed the change in address and looked at the boss unexpectedly. Ah. Oh, you misunderstood. I'm not a great mage, I'm just an apprentice who has just reached the third ring. 
The reason why I look calm and composed is because of my personality. I'll just take it this way, the boss said, pouring another glass of beers and then calmly changing the topic. Who are you looking for at my bar? Wong fumbled in the pocket of his robe and took out a flyer. I saw this flyer on the bulletin board at the entrance of the city, mixed with a bunch of commissions for rat extermination, transporting goods, and repairing sewers. The boss glanced at the flyer and expressed his first impression, the characters are very beautiful. Yes, it's a beautiful floral design. The flyer maker has received a good education and may have learned how to draw. Boss. But this task seems a bit nonsensical. Investigating the missing stray cats and dogs in the city. Which noble lady sent this commission? As a third ring caster, do you really want to take on such a job? Wang shrugged and said, I have been raised by my teacher in a tower since I was born, and I only have contact with the teacher's apprentices. I haven't found any teammates who can entrust my life to. Don't you think this kind of task is just right? Because the boss has always referred to him as, you, Wang also used, you. The boss laughed dumbfounded and said, this kind of task cannot find reliable teammates. At most, we can find some half-grown kids who come to play house. They are used to hearing adventurer stories from the bards and have a sudden idea to become a part of the story. On our street, there are two foolish children who received a commission to go to the sewer to exterminate rats. However, when they got down, they found that there was a goblin's nest in the sewer, and it was the kind of nest where there were goblins fighting mages. Wang frowned and said, that's too bad. I read about the earth spirit battle mage in the teacher's diary, and back then, the teacher's team was the only one who escaped. In the teacher's records, the earth spirit war mage cast a spider web spell while being besieged, entangled the soldiers in the team, and then ignited it with a fiery spell ball. The soldiers burned charcoal in screams, and the priest girl in the team was frightened, unable to cast the magic. The boss looked at Wang thoughtfully and mechanically agreed, yes, that's it. Wang. What is the final result? The boss suddenly woke up from his thoughts and replied, the two children didn't come out. The neighbors who knew where they were going entered the sewer to search and soon discovered the goblin's lair. Before that, we had always thought it was a community of homeless people. Lord Duke Landon dispatched city guards and adventurers to form a powerful sweep team, which quickly wiped out the underground goblins. Speaking of you. The mission you took to find cats and dogs may also be related to goblins. Goblins like to eat wild cats and dogs, and the young lady who sent the mission probably didn't know about the goblins being swept away. Wang. You actually treat the goblins lair like a homeless community. No wonder we are. In some parts of Langdon City, even the shadow thieves are not clear about the details. They are controlled by local gangs. Mouse Street, Swan Gate Lane, not to mention the Goblin's Nest, I wouldn't be surprised even if there were strongholds of the heartbreaking demon in these places. Wong keenly grasped the loophole in the boss's words and said, there may be goblin dens in these places, and it's not related to you treating the underground goblin dens as a homeless community, right? These are two different things. The boss asked back, do you think those homeless people are really homeless and pitiful people? Wang Zhaoji. At this moment, the sturdy mercenary who had been listening to the conversation over here walked over and stood arm away from Wang. At this distance, the mercenary is clearly on guard against the powerful touch spells of the mages. Even a single cold touch can make an adult feel unbearable pain. Experienced mercenaries know not to let a caster easily touch you. Wang. What advice do you have? The mercenary laughed and said, teach me. I can't even spell this word correctly. You're really a newcomer who came out of the tower. I said, aren't you looking for a trustworthy companion? Finding a missing cat or dog is too childish. Why don't you join us in besieging the bandits? The target is the thief group who has been robbing along the Shield Road recently. They have been causing trouble for six months and should have accumulated a lot of treasure. Wang carefully examined the mercenaries. 
The mercenary enthusiastically introduced his companions to the team, saying, I, as you can see, am a warrior. The wanderers on the team have now gone to their guild to serve. That silly guy is a barbarian, and then our sharpshooter lady. Wang. Don't you have any divine spellcasters? What if you get injured? Miss Sagittarius can treat minor injuries, and she can also use love to soothe your pain. Wang turned his head to look at the proud members of the mercenary team, staring at the only cat woman among them. The woman cast an eyebrow at him. Uh, Wang averted his gaze, this is a bit too far ahead for me. And you see, you are a team that has been cooperating for a long time, so it's not good for me to join rashly. Finally, according to my teacher's teachings, a team should at least have a priest or one of the paladins. Oh my goodness, the teacher's teachings. The mercenary spread out his arms to his team members, and all of them laughed and shook their heads. Then the mercenary drew closer to Wang and patted his shoulder hard, saying, This is your own adventure, let's start by throwing away the teacher's teachings. Wang looked at the mercenary seriously and said, No, this is actually not about education. There have been many great wars throughout ancient Kasania, so undead spirits are quite common in Kasania. Without priests or paladins, how can you efficiently deal with undead spirits? The mercenary looked at his team members and then shook hands with Wang, saying, using a hammer. Actually, we haven't encountered a large number of undead appearances yet. Even in the underground city, there are mainly groups of skeleton soldiers in groups of three or five. His friend's voice came from a distance. Unless there are witches at work, the undead creatures of Kasania cannot become the climate. Wang. Well, I'm considering it. The tavern owner spoke up, I will vouch for these people who often appear here, they are trustworthy. Wang. I know. But you see, the meeting time mentioned on this notice is almost now, and I'm the only one coming. I think I should at least see what the client looks like with such good handwriting, and understand why he wants to investigate the disappearance of the cat and dog. I understand, the mercenary who took the initiative to throw an olive branch clapped hard. I know what you're up to. You've read too many nightly novels and dream of having a beautiful encounter this time. A burst of laughter erupted from the mercenary friend's table. The mercenary hugged Wang's shoulder and said, Don't think so much. Even if you entrust, beautiful aristocratic ladies will still be arranged to meet in luxurious restaurants in the upper city area. They will definitely not be any beautiful aristocratic ladies. It's possible for aristocratic guys who want to play mercenary games. As soon as the words fell, the door of the tavern opened, causing the bells on the lintel to make a joyful sound. Everyone turned their heads together to look at the door, just as they saw someone putting down their hood and revealing a head of silver long hair like moonlight. Wang pointed to the person who came and asked the mercenary, What does your noble male look like? Mercenary. How could you have no common sense to treat someone like this as a man? Didn't you see the weight on your chest? Wang solemnly replied, that could be a one-dot-piece breastplate. In order to bounce off some projectiles, the latest breastplates are designed like this. The girl who had just entered the door also heard Wang's words and froze, looking over here. Seeing this scene, the mage apprentice also began to doubt his own judgment. He asked in a tone of academic discussion, aren't you? Coming to such a place of high education, so you wore a breastplate. Although I think a lock armor may be more suitable. The girl also said in a somewhat serious tone, I did wear locksmith armor. Wang touched his lips and remained silent for a few seconds before suddenly realizing, I understand, this is your second sexual characteristic. At the table in the distance, the cat Sagittarius laughed very loudly. The mercenary looked bewildered and said, where is the laughing point? What is a second sexual characteristic? Can you explain the language? The boss said to the girl next to him, this young wizard, master mage, has just left the magic tower and started his own study tour. He doesn't have common sense, so please bear with him. That's it. The girl nodded. So, who are you applying for? 
I mean, for the mission of investigating missing cats and dogs. Wong raised his hand, just like the students in class. Girl. You're such a weirdo. Ah, uh, maybe I should use you. Wang. I came because among the many tasks on the entire bulletin board, this task looks the most unusual. How did you see it? The girl sat down next to Wang without even keeping a distance. Wang. If you're just looking for a lost pet, just use the positioning spell with a prophet mage. There are dozens of spells I know that can deal with different situations and achieve your goals, and these are not particularly difficult spells. In addition, you can also find forest rangers whose skills can locate pets. There are also druids, and even a priest can talk to animals. You must have found something unusual. The girl nodded and said, that's great. You saved me a lot of effort. What do you call it? Wang extended his hand and said, I come from a continent further east of Saturn. Wang is my surname, and I don't really like my name, so just call me Wang. My name is Elizabeth Landon, and I am the third daughter of the Duke of Landon. In other words, I am the third in line heir to this territory. The girl held the king's hand. Wang suddenly realized that his hand was softer than he had expected, as if it would melt at any moment. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Disciples of Men Emerging from Legendary Stories You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 The Man Who Comes Out of a Legendary Story His disciple after releasing Elizabeth's hand, Wang looked at the girl's hand with some reluctance. The tavern owner and the mercenary exchanged a glance, with a clear understanding of what had happened. Then. And Wang asked, you seem to be very familiar with what happened to me, so what happened to me just now? Is this some kind of contact spell that works? Elizabeth frowned slightly and said, what? Wang recalled for a moment and described it carefully, I just touched Elizabeth. I mean, when Miss Landon's hand, it felt very special. I felt like she was as cold as snow, and most importantly, I wanted to hold it in my hand more, even for a little while. Is this some kind of spell? But I didn't notice any magical light. The mercenary once again hugged Wang's shoulder and said, This is the throb of youth. Wang. I see. As I have read in the book, I have developed a desire to mate with Miss Langdon. Elizabeth's face turned pale and her eyes widened. She had been receiving etiquette training since the age of seven, in order to maintain the composure and proper behavior of the Duke's family even in the face of a landslide. However, in this moment, all these trainings seemed to have failed. Wang didn't notice Miss Landon's condition at all. He looked at the oak cup with B beer on the table and continued to mutter, I've never been very good at controlling spells. The teacher said this is because I know too little about human emotions, and this experience has been very beneficial for me to use controlling spells. Elizabeth had regained the duke's composure as he murmured, clearing her throat and attracting the king's attention. She exclaimed loudly, let's talk about the disappearance of the cat and dog. Wang nodded and said, okay, please go ahead. Elizabeth took out an account book from under her cloak and opened it to display the dense records on it. This seems like some kind of interview record, Wang said, Looking over his head yes, I dispatched servants to inquire with a large number of residents of Langdon City. This column shows the location of the inquiry, and this column shows the residents of the residents. The main content of the inquiry is whether they have seen wild cats recently. Most residents have said they haven't seen it before, and some have said they don't even have the wild cat that used to trouble them at night. The residents marked here are those who usually have a habit of feeding wild cats. They all indicate that the cats that have been begging frequently recently are gone. However, these people do not care, after all, they are just wild cats. Wang nodded and said, I understand. With so many inquiry records, even if there are deliberately fraudulent ones, it is enough to indicate that the number of wild cats in the city is indeed decreasing significantly. That's right, so. Where's the dog? Wang interrupted Elizabeth's words. Elizabeth. 
What? We are investigating the mass disappearance of wild cats and dogs, so you should have evidence to prove that dogs are also missing in large numbers. Elizabeth. Oh, that's right. Wild dogs are different from wild cats. Wild dogs can harm people and spread mad dog disease. So there is a dedicated department in Landon City that kills wild dogs, and this department hasn't killed a single wild dog in two months. Wang. Did you look at the records of this department? They didn't even cheat to cover up that they weren't working. Elizabeth exclaimed in surprise, how did you know they would falsify the records? Why don't you know? My teacher's apprentice often cheats and slacks off, and when he finds out, he will hang up and beat him in the punishment room. Wong spread his hands. Elizabeth nodded and said, Okay, I understand. It's true from the records that the dog extermination department is still working diligently, but my father has scouts responsible for monitoring whether each department is working. The scouts said they haven't opened for two months. But they haven't been slacking off and are still patrolling very diligently. Wang. I understand. The wild cats and dogs in Langdon City have indeed disappeared on a large scale. Elizabeth. I suspect there may be a necromancer. No, it's impossible. Wang interrupted Elizabeth once again, necromancer is a skill that controls death and soul. The death and soul of cats and dogs are too low. Level. Even if we gather all the stray cats and dogs in the city to kill, we can't cast any powerful necromancer. At most, we can only summon a bunch of animal skeletons. Elizabeth looked at the king seriously and said, Are you familiar with necromancy? Are you a necromancer? No, I am from the prophecy school. But I am knowledgeable about all school's spells, even protective spells that I cannot use. Elizabeth. You can't use protective spells. You can't even use shield spells. Yes. Aren't you at a significant disadvantage in spell battles? Aren't magic missiles guaranteed to hit? Wang smiled confidently and said, I'm at home. I mean in the tower, the victory rate against spellcasters of the same level is 100%. As a mage of the prophecy school, I can always get ahead of my opponents. Elizabeth. But actual combat is not a one dot on point one battle in the arena. What if the magic missile has already been fired? Magic missiles do not cause damage to objects and can be blocked with a shield. In theory, I can even use a flying knife created by the spell system to shoot down each magic missile. One Dun paused. I am very good at spell systems. Elizabeth's face was filled with disbelief. So Wong continued, Okay, using the curse system to combat magic missiles is a bit ridiculous, but using Bigby's protective palm can definitely block most of the magic missiles. Elizabeth. Isn't that the five ring spell? Wong raised his eyebrows and said, Ah, yes, that's the five ring spell. But there are other ways to deal with it such as using invisibility. As long as the enemy can't see you, they can't fire magic missiles at you. But. Well, I have to admit that dealing with magic missiles is a hassle for me, who can't use shield spells. Elizabeth. Then you shouldn't have said this. Wang. Um. You're right. I won't talk about it next time. Let's continue talking about cats and dogs. Elizabeth. Okay, you have overturned my theory of necromancers. Do you have any speculations? Wang. What's the difference between making inferences based solely on these clues and imagining? Maybe it's just a big stomach king who likes to eat cat and dog meat. It could also be an underground goblin tribe storing food. There might even be a group of druids in the city who want to take these poor little animals back to nature. Elizabeth's ears turned slightly red, possibly because she had just confidently stated the hypothesis of the necromancer. Wang. However, it can be investigated that even if the Duke established a specialized department to exterminate stray dogs in the entire city, they could not be completely eradicated. Either magic or a large number of manpower were used. 
Wong glanced at the tavern owner and added, maybe it's not manpower. The tavern owner said to Elizabeth, last week, the Lord mobilized the city defense forces and adventurers to eliminate a fairly large goblin tribe underground. Elizabeth. I know. Are you saying that this may be related to the disappearance of cats and dogs? The tavern owner shrugged and said, the municipal department of Langdon City has never really controlled the city's sewers, so anything can be hidden underneath. Wait a moment. Wong raised his right hand, raised his index finger, and pointed back and forth to the boss and Elizabeth. Why do you look so familiar? Elizabeth. Use your clever brain, Your Excellency the Mage. How could the Duke's third daughter appear alone in an ordinary tavern in the slums? Wan looked at the tavern owner and then at the mercenary who had returned to his companion's side in the distance. These people are all my servants, Elizabeth continued, this is my stronghold in the slums. Wang exclaimed, oh, and then gave a thumbs up. Reasonable. So what happened before you came in was a screening test for me. Elizabeth. Yes, I've been observing you on the second floor and only then did I take a detour through the main entrance to make sure you're not my brother's spy. Wang. So you suspect your brothers? That the Duke's first and second heirs are related to this matter. I've tested it, Elizabeth said. Second brother can't be sure, but eldest brother probably has nothing to do with this matter. To be honest, I don't understand what earth-shattering conspiracy can be done by taking away the cats and dogs in the city. I'm just sure there's something fishy here. The tavern owner muttered in a low voice, it's so evil that there must be demons at home. Elizabeth nodded and said, of course, my goal is to form a trustworthy team through this incident. After all, my father's health is not as good as before. Wang. You need the ability to protect yourself. The girl looked at Wang with sincere eyes and said, Your Excellency, are you willing to join this team? Before Wang could answer, the cat Sagittarius in the corner shouted, Of course he would, Mississippi. He has a desire to mate with you. Elizabeth's ears turned slightly red again, and she turned her head and scolded, I know your race is so wild, Miss Cat, but in the city of humanity, please take care of yourself. After speaking, she looked at Wang again. Wang. To be honest, this is just my instinctive impulse. My subjective will does not have this idea. Elizabeth was momentarily disappointed, but she suppressed the expression of this emotion and said, Are you saying join the team? I mean my desire for you. As for the team, yes, my purpose here is to join a team, after all, this is the beginning of the adventure. Elizabeth. Do you? Do you think your teacher's tower is actually inside the land and domain? If you came from outside the domain, you've been traveling for a while, and it's not common for mages to travel alone. Wang smiled and said, well, I was thrown directly to the city gate by the teacher using teleportation spells. Today, the soldiers at the gate can testify for me. The teacher said this was the starting point of his adventure back then, so I should also start from here. Elizabeth pondered for a moment and asked, Your teacher. What is your name? Wang stared at Elizabeth and slowly uttered a name. Elizabeth's face turned pale again, and she had to cover her mouth with her hand before she could make a sound. The tavern owner remained much more calm, muttering softly, the last time I heard this name was in a bard's ballad. His story of eliminating the witch, Sadera, is one of my favorite jokes. Wong carefully observed Elizabeth's reaction, and when the girl regained her composure, he said, my teacher said that after reporting his name, people would definitely forget to question the authenticity because they were too shocked. He actually got it right, damn it, he pretended to. Elizabeth. So, which disciple are you? I think I should be the most proud student of the teacher. You can call me the chief disciple. Elizabeth. How old are you? Eighteen years old, Elizabeth. You're the same age as me. Did you come out to experience it? I have already said so. My teacher placed me directly at the city gate, saying that this is the most suitable starting point for adventure. 
The tavern owner interjected, 18-year-old third ring spellcasters, this is already a genius. Many mediocre talents in their fifties and sixties will also use the fourth ring spell. But miss, he only has experience living in high towers. You may also need to recruit a seasoned spellcaster with practical combat experience. Elizabeth then withdrew her gaze from the king and said, Indeed. Wang. Actually, stray cats and dogs are not a big deal. Organizing a reliable team is what matters. Am I right? Elizabeth. Stray cats and dogs are also a big deal because it's too abnormal. My intuition makes me think there must be a conspiracy behind it. We must find the person who made the stray cats and dogs disappear and figure out what they are doing no matter what. But you're right, both of my brothers have their own trusted teams, and I need them too. It took me two years to establish this tavern, gathering a few trustworthy people, but I couldn't find a trustworthy spellcaster. The tavern owner interjected, the spellcasters are precious treasures, and most people don't want to spend time with the young lady. Those who come here are basically scammers who only know how to play tricks. Wang. No wonder you said that from the beginning. As soon as the words fell, Wang suddenly jumped from his seat to the side, making a series of hand gestures accompanied by short and powerful incantations. Six mirrors appeared in front, back, left, and right of him. Then Wang quickly moved his position, and the mirror also danced along, immediately unable to distinguish which one was the real him. Someone applauded. The figure that appeared at some point stopped applauding and pulled off her hood, revealing a dark female face. Her pointed ears and black skin together symbolized her race. Miss, this wizard's reaction speed is very fast. I thought he wouldn't notice my existence until I pressed the dagger against his neck. The choice of spell is also very correct, and Mirror Shadow is the best choice in this situation. Wang carefully examined the newly emerged figure, and his illusion faithfully replicated his movements. Zhuo Elf, Miss Landon, your team members are really rich and colorful. Capman, Zhuo, is it time for the dwarves and Tivlin to appear next? End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Dwarves are the impeccable front row. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Dwarves are the impeccable front row. Elizabeth shook her head and said, No, actually, what you're seeing now is all the people under my command who can fight. Wang frowned and said, Aren't you a duchess? In common language, you're also a princess. Can't you command the Duke's combat forces? The Langdon Legion should have 200 knights, and with their attendants, there should be about a thousand well-equipped standing armies. If you include the security forces and militia of various towns, you should have a large army of about 15,000. This is a big battle that requires a certain amount of time to eliminate with the use of the Nine Rings magic. As a princess, can't you even mobilize one? Elizabeth looked at the apprentice wizard with a speechless expression and said, as you just said, for the Nine Ring spellcasters, these 15,000 members of the rabble can only play a role in delaying time. From the history of various wars, we can learn that at least 60% of the victory or defeat of a war is the result of a high dot end battle. The cornerstone of Landon's leadership is the knights and their attendants. Wang. Yes, Royal Highness Princess, where are your knights? Elizabeth felt a bit embarrassed and said, I, not yet. The cat sitting in the distance shouted, she didn't take a fancy to any of them. What she means is that you are not satisfied with the abilities of all the knights. Wang asked. Elizabeth bit her lip. Cat man, she doesn't like it. Wang looked puzzled and said, what does it mean? Shouldn't it be used with strong abilities and loyalty? The tavern owner tried to smooth things out by saying, miss, your requirements are quite high. Now, may I introduce the members of the team to your excellency the mage? Okay, Elizabeth descended the donkey and turned her gaze to the drow elves. This is our wanderer and the most experienced member of the team, Marika. Chua air elf Mary Ka smiled and said, I have rich experience in various senses, little wizard, Wang. 
Well, Zhuier's hometown is far from Langdangling. If you can appear here, you must have been adventuring for a long time. Zhuier laughed heartily for some reason. Elizabeth's expression was somewhat inexplicable, and she turned to the next person. Cat God Shooter Michaela. I was just about to say, Wang raised a hand, what does the meaning of a marksman mean? Is she a marksman? No, if we insist on division, she is a forest ranger who likes to use bows and arrows and knows some wandering skills. The classification of professions on the cat side is different from ours. Wang. I know that they don't differentiate between wanderers and forest rangers, so a cat archer is likely also skilled at drawing double swords for combat. Zol Elf. Is this also knowledge obtained from books? Not entirely, some of them are teachers' personal statements. The tavern owner interjected, his teacher is the protagonist of Roshar's Dawn and has been working with the Catman tribe for a period of time. What? The drow elf looked shocked. Isn't that a bard's poem? Shouldn't it all be made up? The tavern owner has two hands to share. Elizabeth continued, Mark, a skilled swordsman. Gortrek, a barbarian from the Moose tribe, is particularly skilled at the giant axe. Wang. Is it my illusion? It seems a bit perfunctory when you introduce them. Mark shrugged and said, because we are ordinary in ordinary. We cannot cast magical spells, nor can we unknowingly touch someone else's purse on their waist. Wang immediately lowered his head and checked the casting material bag around his waist. Mark. Master, during battles, we will try our best to delay until you finish casting the spell. Gao Tsueka nodded. Wang also saw that barbarians were either not good at common language or simply did not like to speak. Elizabeth. Finally. She placed her hand on her prominent second sexual characteristic and said, It's me, Elizabeth Langdon. Wang frowned and said, Are you also going on an adventure together? Shouldn't you stay in a luxurious mansion and wait for us to come back and report the results? Elizabeth's gaze sharpened, obviously she was angry. I'm a sorcerer. She raised her volume slightly. Since I was very young, my bedroom has been haunted a lot. After my father's wizard came to inspect it, he discovered my sorcerer lineage. Then, my father spent a lot of money hiring a sorcerer master from Nice to teach me. Wang. I understand. How many spells can you cast? Second Ring Road. It's one less ring than the third ring I'm sorry, this is a saliva song that one of my teacher's apprentices often likes to sing. Although this song is used to mock my junior brother who has lower casting ability than me, I didn't mean to disrespect your casting ability when I sang it at this time. Elizabeth. I know. Warlocks are not as good at mastering the diversity of spells as mages. Wang. You are so beautiful, as a sorcerer, you must be outstanding. This is common sense, the more beautiful a sorcerer is, the more powerful he is, regardless of gender. Elizabeth accepted the flattery with a fake smile and responded calmly, thank you. I'm really good at magic missiles. Wang. Not bad, in the future, you will be the one to deal with light armor and unarmed enemies. Elizabeth frowned and stared at the wizard apprentice with suspicion. Wang stared at her expression for a few seconds before suddenly realizing, oh, this was just burying me. I will be careful not to become your enemy. Elizabeth looked helpless and said, your reaction has actually put me down. I didn't mean to. I know. That's good, Wang nodded. As soon as he finished speaking, Michelle was overjoyed. Elizabeth glared at the cat man and said, don't laugh. We've met now, let's return to the disappearance of the cat and dog. The only thing that looks like a clue now is the goblin tribe that was wiped out last week. Why are you raising your hand again? Wang. We don't have any priests or paladins yet. Elizabeth asked helplessly, do we have to have a priest or a paladin? Based on the current development, the next step is to investigate the ruins of the goblin tribe underground, isn't it? 
There may be undead spirits in the sewer, and we may need clergy to expel them. I don't have magic to handle batches of undead spirits so efficiently. Wong paused for a moment and added, Besides, we only exterminated the goblin tribe last week. It's a tribe with the earth spirit war mage, and there must have been casualties on the human side. Plus the dead goblins. It's very likely that there will be naturally generated undead beings. Marika nodded and said, There is indeed a newly released commission from the thief guild to eliminate the undead in the sewer. It should be the end of last week's big move. Elizabeth looked at the ceiling, her helplessness evident on her face. Wang. You look like a little girl who has been planning an outing with great enthusiasm for a long time, but couldn't go out on the rainy day. For a moment, the entire tavern fell silent. The cat man was suppressing his laughter, while the swordsman was desperately stepping on the cat man's feet for her to hold on to. The drow elves looked back at the mage apprentice with appreciative eyes. The tavern owner coughed and broke the awkward silence. Elizabeth leaned her forehead and said, Thank you for your precise description. I have been looking forward to my first team adventure for a long time. Wait a moment, why did you think of this description? Aren't you always living in a tall tower? You probably haven't participated in any hiking trips or met any little girls. Perhaps the princess herself was not aware that her counterattack was actually retaliating against what the king had just said. Anyway, Wang didn't notice this, and the mage continued to say in a steady tone, First of all, it's true. But I've read about other people hiking in books. Second of all, there's actually a girl in the tower who's the same age as me. But. He hesitated and looked back and forth at some external feature of the drow elf and the human sorcerer girl. Chua Air asked with great interest, what's wrong with her? She doesn't have such prominent secondary sexual characteristics, and now I'm starting to suspect that she might not be a girl. The tavern is quiet again. After a moment, Elizabeth asked in an uncertain tone, Is this a joke? Should I laugh? No, this is a statement. Mark raised his glass high and said, Actually, this young wizard is very much in line with my imagination of a wizard, a complete bookworm. Let's drink to a bookworm. The silent barbarian raised his cup, which was one circle larger than a regular wine glass, and said, Cheers. The drow elves ignored the human warrior and stared at the king, saying, Are you a wizard of the prophetic school? Yes. You didn't actually listen to me just now. No wonder. Just now you were able to perceive my threat not because of experience, but because of the crisis perception ability bestowed upon you by the school. What I hate the most is you, a difficult-to-sneak attack spellcaster. Wang hesitated for a second before saying, Thank you. Should I say thank you? Elizabeth tapped the table with her slender fingers and said, Go back to our task. I agree, we should indeed find a pastor. Wang. Even a paladin can do it. No. I don't want those stiff cans. Let's find a pastor. Wang. That's okay. But I have another question. Elizabeth. You ask. I'm used to asking questions. Are you planning to take this team to investigate the incident from the beginning? Elizabeth. That's right. At first, I thought this was a ghost done by a necromancer and planned to take everyone to search suspicious places like cemeteries, but you immediately overturned my speculation. Wang. Even if the caster is not found. That's right. Although Bob has been urging me to have a reliable caster before taking action, I can't wait to take action. The tavern owner said, the young lady is really like a child planning an outing. Wang. I have another question. Who is Bob? The tavern owner said, It's me. All right, it's okay. Wang let go of his raised hand. Elizabeth was about to speak when Wang spoke again, I just traced the process, so you suspect that the necromancer is behind it without any concrete evidence. Are you going to lead an incomplete adventure team to search the cemeteries and underground caves around the city? 
Do you even have any divine spellcasters in your team who can target necromancers? Elizabeth rolled her eyes and said, Yes, that's it. Wong spread out his hands and said, Oh my goodness, just now my first impression of you was completely overturned. Elizabeth. What was your first impression of me? Your Royal Highness Royal Highness Princess, who is very clever and resourceful, wants to accumulate strength to show his skill in the coming drama of seizing the throne. What about now? A silly white sweet sorcerer who can't figure out where he is. Elizabeth's face blushed slightly, and it was unclear whether it was due to anger or shame. Anyway, the cat laughed so loudly that even the soldiers were muttering, don't do this, it's not good. Wong asked another question, so I don't understand why there would be such a seasoned-looking drow elf wanderer willing to become a subordinate of the princess. The drow elf said decisively, due to kindness, she accepted me who had nothing and allowed me to complete my revenge. Listen, mage, you may be extremely intelligent, and you may become the princess's intelligence in the future, but remember, if you dare to harm the princess, my blade will pierce through your chest. Wong nodded and said, I remember. What about others? It's also for similar reasons. Elizabeth interrupted Wong's question and said, It's not important. I admit that I didn't consider certain aspects, and if you're willing to share your wisdom, I can't thank you enough. Wong stared at the girl's face for several seconds before nodding and saying, I understand. So let me share my thoughts. Starting with goblins should be one of the few actions we can currently take. Another action we can take is to scout nodes in the city that can serve as magic hubs. The two actions correspond to the two paths I just mentioned to achieve the extinction of cats and dogs. Investing a lot of manpower or using magic. In addition, we can also investigate whether there are a large number of druids in the city, and they can also control a large number of cats and dogs at the same time. The cat Sagittarius raised his right hand high and said, I'll take care of this. Wong looked at the cat man and said, So. Are there associations of natural spellcasters in the city? The cat nodded and said, I guess so. Anyway, it's okay to leave it to me. In the tribe, I often deal with the druids. Wong. Then I'll leave this to you. Wait a minute, I don't remember you becoming our leader anymore. I remember that the mages of the charm school like to command others, interrupted the drow elf Elizabeth. He just said he's very good at spells of the curse system. Wang. Indeed. Elizabeth. And my education is to let those who are good do what they are good at. If they are good at thinking and directing, let them do it. I just need to keep the veto power. Wang blinked at Elizabeth and said, I know this, it's called the Imperial Academy. Exchange knowledge and responsibility for the loyalty of your subordinates. Elizabeth sighed and said, This is far from the Imperial Academy. Keep arranging for you. Wang. Okay. While Misha is collecting information about natural spellcasters such as druids, I need to visit places in the city that can serve as magic nodes. Some of these places may be in more chaotic urban areas, so I need a guide to ensure that I don't get paid for. Shwayer. I'll come. I'll draw a map for you, you go find those places yourself, and I'll sneak in the shadows to protect you. Mark also raised his hand and said, I have some thin noodles in the slums, and I can still give you directions. Wang. Okay, you all come. Lastly, in order to investigate the ruins of the underground goblin tribe as soon as possible, we need to find a divine spellcaster. Elizabeth sighed and said, If there's really nothing I can do, I know a paladin. Wang. You said you don't want paladins. I mean, if I really can't find it. Let's find it first. And based on my teacher's experience, it's best to find a dwarf priest. Elizabeth frowned and said, Why? Is there any explanation for this? Wang solemnly replied, The dwarf priest won't block the line of sight and is a reliable front row. My teacher said so. The cat man patrolling the forest laughed heartily. Cats, as representatives of acute sub-races, 
naturally struggle against slow-paced, rock-like dwarves. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Conspiracy, of course, there must be a conspiracy. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Conspiracy, of course, there must be a conspiracy Bruce Landon noticed something and raised his head in a cautious posture, pressing his right hand on the brooch. This brooch is a life.saving item that he obtained with all his might, and the stored spells inside can save his life at critical moments. After all, he is not like his sister. Although Bruce Landon is also quite handsome, he is not a sorcerer and has no casting ability. Seeing the tall and slim figure walking out from behind the curtains, Bruce Landon breathed a sigh of relief. Can't you walk through the main entrance? Use your proud disguise. He looked at his figure, his tone completely relaxed, but his hand didn't take it off the brooch. We are with the shadow, it is our habit, the figure whispered. So, let's get to the point. Did the mage who appeared at the city gate this morning thoroughly investigate? Is he a disciple of my father's distinguished guest? No, there is no evidence to suggest that he is a disciple of the Grand Master of the Palace. However, many people have seen him. He stayed in front of the notice board at the door for a considerable amount of time and removed the notice posted by your sister. Bruce Landon frowned and said, Why would a mage take a commission from that bulletin board? The bulletin board at the entrance of the city is only used by the lowest level mercenaries to search for missions. And the tasks that will appear there are mostly boring tasks such as transporting goods and killing mice. Occasionally, there will be a debt collector who will be immediately snatched by the lowest level muscle thugs. One day ago, when Bruce Landon heard that his sister had posted a solicitation on that bulletin board, he couldn't believe his ears. His sister, the youngest daughter of the Duke of Landon, usually appears clever and clever, but in this matter, she behaves like a mentally disabled person. So much so that Bruce Landon once suspected there was some mystery behind it, thinking that it was actually a secret code for someone. After all, the content on the solicitation notice is also very inappropriate, investigating missing cats and dogs. It sounds like a noblewoman playing house. Although Elizabeth Landon is indeed the most prestigious noblewoman in the city. Today, it seems like everything has come to light. Bruce Landon said solemnly, I understand. My lovely half-sister, I don't know when she established contact with a certain great wizard. This solicitation is actually their secret code for a meeting, and the great wizard has sent a magic consultant to her. However, the wanderer hiding in the shadows interrupted Bruce's words, a young man came out of the portal. When the guards at the city gate checked him, they were very certain that he was at most eighteen years old. Most eighteen-year-old apprentices could only cast second ring magic, so being a magic consultant was a bit too young, isn't it? Bruce Landon frowned and said, he may have deceived the guards through spells like suggestion. Mages are all very cunning. Anyway, my sister may have a powerful mage assistant now. Be careful of this in the future. Wanderer. Actually, that wizard quickly left her stronghold and began wandering around the city after meeting your sister. A person. Bruce asked in surprise. No, too, with the swordsman mark. Also. Maybe that drow is also nearby. Bruce pursed his lips and pondered for a moment before asking, if we test his strength. Will it reveal that we did it? I don't want to tear my lovely sister apart so quickly. Wanderer. Actually, you don't have to worry so much because your sister seems to be planning an adventure. We don't know where she's going yet. If she's going to a dangerous place, such as the city's sewer, maybe you can always lose one opponent. Bruce. Isn't she looking for a cat? What kind of adventure could there be? Last week, your father just mobilized the city defense army and adventurers to eliminate the underground goblin tribe. Wild cats and dogs are the favorite food reserves for goblins living in urban sewers. Bruce was stunned, and after a brief moment of contemplation, he ordered, find a way to release intelligence, suggesting that the goblins are causing the decrease in cats and dogs. There's no need to imply, 
adventurers know this. Bruce. My sister is not an adventurer, she's just a little girl playing adventure games. Let's get the information out, and... Preferably not through the Thief Guild, Marika will see that we're trying to seduce her. Wanderer. Then it's up to you to take action. Perhaps you can tell Miss Marilyn, your classmate during class, a story about goblins liking to eat cats and dogs. Bruce. I will let that bard do this. Marilyn is very obsessed with that guy. You go ahead and continue to monitor that mage apprentice, preferably to get a clear understanding of his abilities. The wanderer bowed slightly and silently retreated into the shadow. Bruce breathed a sigh of relief. The wanderer's guild in this city has placed the future lord's treasure on the second son of Duke Landon, at least for now. Bruce knew that the guild was likely to be so confident in betting because it could threaten his own life at any time. Who knows if my elder brother's strength will further improve in the future. It's already difficult for wanderers to threaten his life now. As for the youngest daughter Elizabeth Landon, she is a sorcerer, and perhaps killing her now is as simple as twisting a baby's arm, but it may not be the case in seven or eight years. Moreover, the Duke of Landon has now hired a renowned old sorcerer as Elizabeth's teacher. Who knows if the old sorcerer has left any life dot saving spells on her. At first glance, the second prince Bruce Landon is the easiest to grasp. Of course, the second prince will never sit idly by. He called out softly, Cassander. I'm here, your highness the prince. A gecko on the wall suddenly deformed and transformed into a tall cat man, quickly landing on the ground. The druid gestured to his employer, everything is normal, the thief has already left. Let Kellerman take over and you go see my sister, this new mage companion. Understood. Cassington hesitated for a moment before saying, Your Highness, as a druid, I have been having nightmares lately. I went to ask Forney, and his interpretation revealed that nightmares are a warning from nature. Bruce smiled and said, Nature, do you mean to say that while all parties are watching the next duke's throne, besides the various forces with ulterior motives, do I still have to worry about nature? I don't know, Cassander shook his head, but the disappearance of wild cats and dogs is indeed strange, and the Greenfield druids are also investigating this matter. Bruce. Then let the druids worry about everything. And of course my sister. Go figure out the details of that wizard. Cassander nodded, turned around and transformed into a sparrow, jumped out of the wooden window of the study, and disappeared under the bright sun. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 The Journey of the Mage and Apprentice to Langdon City You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 the journey of the mage and apprentice to Langdon City at the same time, Mark was leading Wang to wander around the city. Can you really tell where the magic node is through this map? The warrior stretched his head and looked at the map drawn by Joyer in Wang's hand. Wang. There should be no problem. Although this map is hand-drawn, it is quite accurate and the main landmarks are clearly marked. For example, the statue of Landon I is only one meter left of its actual position on the map. Mark looked up at the statue of the first Duke of Landon and noticed a crow perched on top of the statue. Mark. How can you be sure it's off one meter? I have mastered a variant of localization technique, which was developed by my teacher back then to solve my own problem of road blindness. The soldier frowned and held the hilt of his sword at his waist, saying, Did you cast a spell? Yes, I have always had the effect of this spell on me. Mark. I didn't notice you reciting words, did I? When casting spells with verbal elements, it is necessary to pronounce the spell clearly and accurately. This usually means that the surrounding creatures can hear the spell, and most common spells contain verbal elements, which is why Mark is so surprised. Wang. I cast this spell when I set off in the morning, after all, Langdon City is a big city and lacks complete urban planning, with chaotic roads. Without this spell, I may not even be able to reach your tavern before the gathering time. 
Three wild boars, Mark said. Our tavern is called Three Wild Boars. Are you referring to departure? Before leaving the mage's tower? Yes. Is this spell so long that lasting? Can it last for five hours? There's still a little bit of time left, maybe five to ten minutes. After that, you didn't recognize the way anymore. Wang Xiaodao said, how could it be? I have firmly recorded the path back to the three wild boars from here. I don't have the road idiot attribute of my teacher. However, if I want to continue exploring locations in the city where magic may be deployed, I will trouble you. Mark patted his chest and said, leave it to me. So have you finished watching this statue? After reading it, there is no magical light, at least this place has nothing to do with the disappearance of wild cats and dogs. Where are we going down there? Wong pointed to the bottom right corner of the map and said, there is a square here. Mark glanced at the map and said, hanging square, where people sentenced to death are executed every Monday. It's the most chaotic neighborhood in the city, so the execution squad must be armed and escorted by a battalion of ten knights and their attendants. Even so, there are still frequent incidents of robbing the execution ground. The most recent one was a month ago, when a half-orc rode his war wolf, carrying 20.2 knives, and single-handedly attacked the execution team, attempting to kidnap the prisoners on the prisoner's carriage. If it weren't for the escort mage using the slow spell, he might have succeeded. Wang. An orc. Still riding a wolf. How can his wolf evade the guard's gaze and sneak in? Mark spread his hands and said, who knows. That is to say, in addition to the city gate, there are also passages that can allow large quadruped creatures like war wolves to enter the city. Wait a minute, why do you only care about orc wolves? Because as far as I can observe, Langdon City serves as the intersection of Shield Road and the Rhineland River, with a large population of various ethnic groups. Orcs are not uncommon, but their war wolves are very rare. When I entered the city, the orcs I saw also rode horses. Mark pouted and said, Okay, I have to admit that after what you said, I realize that this wolf is the biggest problem. Wang. Right. Let's go. According to the scale of this diagram, we need to walk for half an hour to get to the hanging square. What is a scale bar? It's a common language. It's a common language. How could you not understand this word? As an adventurer, you should often look at maps, right? Yes, I often watch. But you don't know what a scale bar is. Do I need to know these things? Isn't a map just about understanding where to go? Wang raised his eyebrows and said, Indeed, if you don't understand scales. As long as there are landmarks on the map that you can refer to, you can also know the location. But how do you plan your troops to march or set up supply routes? Mark laughed heartily as he leaned onto the wizard's shoulder and said, Do you think I'm involved in this kind of thing? No, no, it's a concern for the knights and their attendants. All I need to do is look at the landmarks and know where I am and where I'm going. Wang Zhaoji said, I see. But Chuair. Miss Elf is obviously proficient in cartography, and the scale of this map is almost entirely correct. In cities like Langdon, elves are also quite common, but the word drow is different. Just saying the word drow in public can potentially be reported to the city guard. The drow elves are generally seen as symbols of evil and chaos, and in the stories of minstrels, they often play the role of fighters of the great villain, or even the great villain himself. Wang almost said Miss Choyer. Mark comforted him and said, don't be so nervous. In fact, there are even more unusual things in the Wanderer's Guild than the Drow. Sunshine and shadows always accompany each other. Let's go, pay attention to your casting material pack. Although I don't think our Wanderers will give others the opportunity to covet your things, being careful is always right. Wang nodded, and then he suddenly had an epiphany expression. I know why the young lady doesn't want to find a paladin. The paladin would shout, look, that evil is worth fighting, when he saw the elf girl, 
and then launch an attack without hesitation. Mark frowned and said, did you realize that? I just realized, Wang Xuan admitted quickly, after all, I have only seen drow elves and paladins in books before. Mark frowned, his face speechless. God, we started to act under the command of a bookworm like you. I began to worry about the future of the Royal Highness Princess. Wang casually asked, is the situation facing your Royal Highness Princess very dangerous? Now it's not dangerous, because since discovering her talent as a sorcerer, the Duke has hired an old sorcerer as her teacher, who is a master who can cast six ring spells. You should know that the Duke's advisor can only cast seven ring spells, while the palace mage who visited today is proficient in eight ring magic. Wang frowned and said, Can you say? It's rare to see people in the outside world who can cast the nine ring spell. Are you saying that? Is it true that Master Jiu Huan is everywhere in the inside? Dot? Wang. Are you referring to inside my teacher's tower? Is that okay? After reaching the level of casting the Nine Rings, mana is no longer the main limitation. Whether or not one can cast the Nine Ring spell, and how many Nine Ring spells one can cast, mainly depends on the mage's own understanding of the world. That's what the book says. That's why mages have to study abroad. You can't become a great mage just by hiding in a tower and reading books, that's what my teacher said. Wang paused for a moment and noticed Mark's expression as if listening to a heavenly book. He continued to explain, well. It's like a spell of enchantment. I'm not good at enchantment, and I often fail to use the simplest enchantment of humans. Mark. Wait a minute, is enchanting humans actually the simplest spell? Yes, after the spell is successful, the goal is just to treat you as a trustworthy friend. Mark. Oh my goodness, I thought the target would listen to your instructions like a construct. Wang Weiwei frowned slightly, but didn't pay much attention. He explained, you can try to command him, but just like you ask other friends, he may not necessarily listen. And once you or your teammates make threatening actions against him, such as attacking him, the spell will expire. The mage apprentice paused, swallowed his saliva, and then continued, because I'm not really good at the confusion control type, I basically don't know how to prepare spells for it. Don't expect me to use spells like immortal humans in the future. Mark. Is it really good for you to just speak up about your weaknesses like that? Just like when I told your highness I'm afraid of arcane missiles. I'm a swordsman and I'm going to be killed by fixed human spells. You won't be prepared for this spell. It's really good news for me. Wang stopped and looked at the swordsman, it seems like. That's what's going on. But you don't know how to attack me, do you? Mark remained silent for two seconds and laughed, that's true. Who would betray the lovely young lady? Wang. Wait a moment, is your statement that you stayed in the team because of her beauty? Of course not. When I was most down, it was the young lady who gave me a piece of bread. She was only five years old at that time. Wang. Does it sound similar to the story of Miss Elf? That's what's going on. In the current situation, only those of us who are driven by emotional reasons will gather around the princess, his highness, the prince of betting for stability, and the prince of betting for betting, who wants to take a chance. Wang. Sounds pretty good, people with emotional reasons are the most loyal. Mark. At least more loyal than those who want to be princesses. Wang. That's the thought of my body, not the choice of my soul. So, if something really happens, how much chance does the princess have of winning? Zero, Mark blurted out, all right, let's get busy with the missing cat and dog matter first. After chatting for a while, we've already walked halfway, and the hanging square is right ahead. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. The Hospitality of Swan Gate Lane. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 The Hospitality of Swan Gate Lane The Hanging Frame Square, as soon as Wang entered, he saw the hanging frame standing in the middle. 
What surprised Wang the most was that this gallows perfectly integrated into the scenery of the square, making you feel that there should be a gallows in such a place where fish and dragons are mixed, and nothing else is suitable. There were still prisoners who had been executed this week hanging on the gallows, and a group of crows stopped at the top of the gallows as if there was no one around, guarding their feast. A new crow wanted to join them, but was surrounded by a group of crows and left in a disheveled manner. Wang frowned and looked at the flying crow until it was out of sight before retracting his gaze. Mark also noticed his actions and asked, that can't be your pet, can it? That crow. Yeah. Why choose crows? Isn't it common for mages to use bats, cats, or fire lizards as their magic pets? Wang. The crow demon pet can speak. Mark. Is that why? Yes. The swordsman had an incredulous expression on his face, but he suddenly turned around and roared at the homeless boy who leaned over at some point, get lost. Your shepherd dog Jim would nod and bow when he saw me. The homeless children dispersed in a flurry and disappeared into the inconspicuous dark alley near the square. Wang. Shepherd dog. Yes, you bastard who makes money with these orphans. If these orphans can survive and grow up smoothly, they will eventually become the new generation of shepherds. By the way, this is also the path I should have taken, Mark said in a low voice. Wang. I have read a book that has been passed down from other planes, called, The Adventures of a Bitter Son. In the end, the protagonist finds his birth mother and discovers that she is a wealthy woman. In the end. Mark interrupted the wizard with a hearty laugh, this is very similar to me. I met the young lady and now I have become her loyal dog. At least I have no worries about food and clothing. Wang. Indeed, compared to that book on ectopic noodles. Let's talk about your pet, Mark interrupted him. Ah, uh, magic pet. What's wrong with magic pet? You chose the crow as your pet just because it can talk. Yeah, according to my teacher, the talking magic pets are the only ones that match the status of a great mage. He also gave an example that in legendary stories, all the great mages who want to subvert the world use crow magic pets, and they even make the magic pets talk nonsense on the protagonist's adventure. Mark frowned and looked at Wang, is that master? A character with such a personality. It's different from the poetry of a bard. Wang. That's it. His favorite thing to do is to use his own crow demon pet to command us apprentices. So I also got a crow demon pet and found that the demon pet can speak very conveniently. I often use the demon pet to order food in the cafeteria, and when people arrive, the food is already on the table. Mark. Canteen. Just understand it as a restaurant in the tower. Mark. It sounds like your tower has a lively atmosphere. Well, it can be said that over a hundred mages live together, and it's impossible to be lively or not. One moment, someone who has made half of the magic statue will go berserk, and another moment, summoning a spell that makes a mistake and allows magma from hell to flow in. Stop it. Mark raised his palm and made a stop gesture. Keep these for the lady. She'll probably like them. Wang. Can she? Of course, I told her about my wandering on the street and she listened with great interest. All right, back to business, is there a problem with this gallows? Wang. No. I can indeed feel the magical light in this square, but it shouldn't be a part of some large dot scale magic. In fact, as soon as we entered this square, I felt the detection magic pointing towards me. Mark. That's also normal, after all a fresh-faced spellcaster appeared on the hangar square. This is the intersection of Swan Gate Lane and Mao Street. Do you see that mouse-like sign over there? That's a tavern, and the street leading back is the famous Mao Street. Do you see the swan sign in the opposite direction? It's the most famous smoking shop here, and coming out from its back door is Swan Gate Lane. Mark was explaining that a dagger was sticking to the king's neck. 
The sudden appearance of the drow elf pulled its hood slightly upwards and slightly revealed its lips, saying, Mage, Detective Detective is not a spell that the Three Ring Apprentice can cast. How did you feel Detective pointing towards you? Even the Prophecy School cannot do it without casting a spell, right? Successful detection and detection can allow me to see images of the person who is exploring me, and at least let me know their direction. Wong calmly replied, and I just felt the magic of detection. But I don't know where the caster is or who he is. Hey, I'll trust you for now. However. You didn't cast Mirror Shadow this time, did you run out of spells today? It's too careless to only prepare one Mirror Shadow. Wong grinned and said, no, I just didn't feel any malice on you. You know that the spells a mage prepares every day are limited, so of course, if you can save them, then save them. Shwayer. A prophetic mage who can sense malice. I have never seen someone like you. My teacher has also said that I have a natural talent in the school of prophecy, Wang said in a completely declarative tone. He paused and added, and now I can predict that trouble will come knocking on us. Mark silently adjusted the position of the long sword at his waist and placed it in a more easily removable area, while his eyes stared at the ill-intentioned man surrounding him. You don't have to prophesy, mage, he said among the people around, someone seemed to know Mark. Hey, Mark, is it fun to spend time with the Royal Highness Princess? When will you be able to sleep with her? Or have you already slept? Mark put on an oily tone and said, if I were you, I wouldn't say such things in front of our wanderers, after all. Who hasn't had a single moment yet? I don't want to become an unclaimed corpse in the stinky ditch of Swan Gate Lane tomorrow. At this moment, the person who looked like the leader spoke up. Tang wants to know the skills of your newly joined mage. After all, the fact that he was sent by the teleportation gate this morning is already known throughout the city. Some even swear that it is the gate of the Nine Rings of the Outer Realm, which opened from the half-face of a certain great mage. Wong was suddenly overjoyed and said, Really? Who recognized it? I want to meet this person who recognizes magic. He must be a master of the Nine Rings magic. Halfway through, he frowned and said, But that's not right. Just now Mark told me that the palace mages visiting here can only proficiently cast the Eight Ring spell. From this, my inference is that there are very few people in this plane who are proficient in the Nine Ring spell. Mark. Is it possible that that person just heard the spell of the Gate of the Other Realm in a bard's poem and casually said it? Wong exclaimed, oh, and gave a thumbs up, reasonable. Mark said to the little head who had just spoken, did you see it? Go back and tell the great Tang that the new wizard of the princess is a fool. Wang. Is this Tang a kind of honorific title? Similar to, Dad, or a nickname? It's also similar to, Dad, or something like that. Little boss. It's a respectful title. Mark, you know Don doesn't like to be perfunctory. So you see, we must do something to test the strength of your new friend. Wang. Are you saying that you want to prepare a test for me? How do you test it? Answer the question. A quick casting competition. I notice that there are also spellcasters among you. Are you asking me to go to the arena with him? Suddenly, the whole room fell silent. The little leader suddenly laughed and said, Ha ha ha, Mark, you wizards are very humorous. Mark said to Wong with a helpless expression, What they mean is, they're ready to fuck us. Wang suddenly realized, oh. That's why this is the content of the test. As soon as the words fell, the drow elf's dagger accurately hit little head's eye. The next moment, a smoke bomb rolled out of her cloak, and with a crisp bang, Wang's vision was completely obscured by the smoke. The figure of the drow elf who was just beside the king completely disappeared into the smoke, and only the enemy's screams made people know what she was doing. Wong muttered, you've also taken away my perspective. As he spoke, his hand had already taken out a small transparent gel from the casting material bag, with an eyelash-like substance suspended inside. 
In fact, that's eyelashes, from a junior brother who enthusiastically provided casting materials in the tower. The casting material was in his hand, and Wang accurately and quickly completed the gesture. At the same time, the spell jumped out of his mouth accurately and clearly. The gel in his hand evaporated in a flash, along with the eyelashes. Then his figure disappeared without a trace. At this moment, someone in the smoke shouted, it's the spell of invisibility, that wizard is invisible. Another voice cursed, don't worry about this, find a way to dispel this smoke bastard. As the words fell, a gentle breeze blew away the smoke. The drow elf is thrusting a dagger into the throat of the fourth unlucky person. The soldier leaned against the gallows and assumed a defensive position, guarding his sides with a short sword and a long sword. As for the wizard, the wizard's whereabouts are unknown. Schweyer. Mark, can't you just kill one? Mark. I don't have as much killing intent as you do. And. Well, I admit I'm not as powerful as you. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. The First Battle of Bookworms. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 The First Battle of Bookworms As Mark finished speaking, he saw the other person's caster taking out talcum powder from the casting material bag. Mark. Hey. That wizard is flipping materials, shouldn't we stop him? Marika, killing the caster is your responsibility. The drow elf spread his hands and said, I have eighteen yards with him, it's too late. Trust our spellcasters. As soon as the words were spoken, the recitation of the spell sounded, and the pronunciation was as standard as the previous invisibility technique, with clear pronunciation. The next moment, a large area of ground in the center of the square became like a freshly scrubbed and waxed tile floor. A leather thief slipped and fell backwards. The mage who was casting a spell was momentarily distracted, looking at the unlucky guy, and then immediately followed suit. Slipping. When he fell, the talcum powder he held in his hand spilled into the sky, shining brightly in the sunlight, seeming to be mixed with some silver powder. This should be the spell material prepared for casting the invisible spell. Mark turned his head to look in the direction where the sound had just come from and saw Wong's figure appearing on the other side of the gallows. Obviously, the spell he had cast earlier had broken his invisibility state. Facing Mark's gaze, Wong shouted, What are you waiting for? The enemy doesn't dare to move now, they might slip with just one move. You're actually attacking them. Mark. Did you throw away the greasy technique? Did you complete the movement and casting in just this little time? Otherwise. While speaking, Wong took out a small wooden arrow target model from the material bag. Mark realized what spell he was going to cast and shouted, Don't give it to me. I don't have ranged attack ability, and I'm not sure if I can walk on greasy ground without falling. The king cast a spell, and the spell and spell name are the same. Defeat enemy planes first. The effect of this spell can make the next attack of the spell target very accurate. Mark looked anxious and said, who did you want me to attack? However, the magical light did not fall on him, but on the king himself. Next, Wong threw away the target model in his hand, swung the slingshot, and threw the pebbles sized stones inside towards the struggling enemy spellcasters. With the blessing of the prophecy spell, defeat enemy machine first, the pebble accurately hit the enemy caster's forehead. This guy's head tilted and he fell down without moving, I don't know if he's dizzy or dead. Mark was about to say something when he saw the drow elves leap forward, their scissor feet gripping the neck of the nearest thief, and then turn around and slap the enemy to the ground. She stepped on the enemy's back and kicked on the ground outside the greasy range, so the enemy turned into a skateboard and rushed into the greasy range. A few cuts flashed by, and two thieves covered their wounds and fell down. The remaining people wanted to turn around and attack Schweyer, but without exception, their feet slipped. The dozen or so people who attacked were all lying on the ground. Some people originally wanted to get up, but upon seeing this posture, they looked at the mage who had been knocked unconscious by the slingshot, 
and then chose to lie on the ground pretending to be dead. There are spellcasters on one side and not on the other, and the outcome is already divided. Joyer raised his head and looked at the archer on the roof of the building on the north side of the square. The archer, seeing that the situation was settled, turned around and quickly fled along the eaves. Mark awkwardly held his long and short swords and stood in place. Wong walked towards the target model he had just thrown down, picked it up, and put it back in his pocket. Marika finished wiping the knife and began checking her props to confirm their consumption. No one looks at the soldiers. Makajia is in place. He hesitated for a moment, then roared with the greatest strength of his life, Kill me. Oh, oh, oh. Marika, who was ordering items, looked up and said, What are you doing? You're not a barbarian, you can't use their violent power. Mark. Um. My roar can increase the momentum of my teammates, I think. Wong's face lit up with joy and he said, Do you still have such a skill? I have never read it in any book. He's talking nonsense, said Joyer. I think so, Wong nodded without concealing his disappointment. At this point, the effect of the greasy technique disappeared, but the enemy lying on the ground seemed unprepared to stand up and collide with the team of only three people again. The drow elf said in a cold tone, Go back and tell your Don that I'm very angry. Tell him to be careful when walking at night. Maybe I'll have the guild change its leader at any time. Go away. As soon as the words fell to the ground, the person who pretended to be dead climbed up with their hands and feet, and ran all the way to disappear into the dark alleys around the square. Mark. Um. I want to remind you that you started by taking action. It's better for you to take action before they even move. Although we were attacked. Dot. As Mark spoke, a person who had fallen to the ground and was injured was using both hands and feet, trying to climb into the shadow of the dark alley. However, Choyer easily caught up and ended his life. The splashing blood made Mark shut his mouth. After finishing all of this, Choyer calmly wiped his weapon. The vast square was so quiet that there was only the creaking sound of corpses dancing on the gallows in the wind. Mark. Tisk, Joyer's killing intent is heavy, no wonder the paladins will kill them without hesitation when they see them. Marika gave Mark a white glance and said, just a few words, no one will consider you mute. Mark shrugged and then looked at Wang, just in time to see him take out a piece of lard from a bag. The mercenary took a cold breath and said, Are you a dimensional bag? Wang. Yes, one of the luggage that the teacher gave me is for storing those spare casting materials. Speaking, Wang put the lard in his hand into the casting material bag on his waist, tied up the dimensional bag, and put it into the pocket inside his robe. Marika. I just repaired the enemy's mage's knife, won't you search his material bag? Oh, you reminded me. Wong snapped his fingers and ran towards the wizard's body with a thud. After he ran away, Mark whispered to Marika, I always feel that this young wizard is also a playboy who came out for a spring outing. His behavior is more like the son of the legendary master than his disciple. He has no right to call us Mississippi. Who said it's not? Marika responded, but just now he cast spells very quickly his choice of spells was also very precise, and he didn't waste any spells at all. As a spellcaster in the team, he is much more useful than a warrior who only knows how to post-war. Marika stopped because at this moment the mage let out a scream of finding the treasure, and then stuffed a dazzling gem into her dimension bag. She frowned slightly and continued, this guy probably has two or three second rings, or even one or two third ring spells to use. In that scene just now, I thought he would use Stinky Cloud to cover all the enemies, but he saw me eliminate nearby enemies and finally chose to put grease under the feet of the remaining enemies. If the enemy stands a little further, one grease cannot completely cover it. Mages need to prepare before casting spells. After a long rest, the mage needs to prepare the spell again, such as after a long sleep. Therefore, it can be approximated that the spells that a mage can cast between two sleeps are fixed, 
and the specific spells depend on what he prepares in the hour after waking up. Mark. But. His self.defense spells. I counted them, one mirror shadow was used up, and the other invisibility was used up. Do you think he still has a few self.defense spells? He doesn't know how to use shield or mage armor. Marika sighed and said, Mark, the mage's armor is a spell system that he can use. Mark exclaimed and added, and he claims to be particularly skilled in the curse system. On one side, he is happily searching for the enemy mage's casting material bag. Spell casters are actually a very verbose profession, and unless they master the skill of casting without materials, a considerable number of spells require materials. Some materials are easy to prepare, such as detecting that the invisible material is just a handful of talcum powder. To make the spell effect better, add a little silver powder inside. The materials for other spells are verbose, such as the famous mage's life. Saving magic trigger, which requires some mercury and a man eating wizard's eyelash. If you don't have friends with ogres, you can only ask wild ogres for one. So, confiscating enemy casting material bags is a very important thing. Wong found talc powder, diamond fragments, and various other biological fragments in the material bag of this unknown mage. The biggest gain is a gem the size of a fingernail cap. After throwing the gemstone into the dimensional bag, the king found something like a gemstone in the enemy's bag, this time as big as an egg. He excitedly took out the item and found it to be a real stinky egg, which should be the casting material for the stinky cloud technique. These thieves are actually carrying a three ring caster. The third ring caster, who was defeated by a precise strike from a greasy spell and a throwing stone rope, was also quite frustrated. Wong stopped searching and stared at the wizard's face, imprinting his foolish appearance in his mind, reminding himself not to die so suffocated. After completing the search for casting materials, Wong picked up the enemy's spell book, flipped through it a few times, and randomly stuffed it into the dimensional bag. Obviously, for him, this spell book is of no value, but it can sell for a few dollars. After finishing everything, Wong walked towards the two members of the team and asked, Do you think I need to cast a detection magic item? These people may have magic weapons. Mark smiled. Don't make a fuss. Don will not send elites equipped with magic weapons to deal with the Royal Highness Princess's team. Shwayer. Yes, at most you can find the things they bought after being deceived, and there are at most one or two tricks stored inside. Wong spread his hands together. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 The Value of Eyelashes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 The Value of Eyelashes Bruce Landon was quite surprised when he saw a pigeon fly into the window and transform into a human form. Did you come back so soon, he said to the druid, have you figured out the strength of that mage? Cassander nodded and said, obviously, Don, from the Thief Guild also wants to figure out the weight of the suddenly appearing mage. And. Don also hopes that your sister can continue to play the pitiful vase and not continue to enhance her strength. Bruce Langdon scolded. His mother, when I told you, there were a lot of twists and turns. What was it that lured my sister to take a sewer adventure? It was this and that again. I had to tell that silly Marilyn about the goblin eating cat's fart at the salon just now. Cassander. Obviously, the guild also hopes that you can continue to play an obedient puppet. Bruce snorted, wait a minute, one day I'll bite him hard. So, what's the level of that mage? Cassander pondered his tone and said, in my personal opinion, it's top dot notch. I mean, among those who can cast spells at the same level, top dot notch. How can we see it? Bruce was not satisfied with a simple conclusion, obviously he wanted to know how this conclusion was deduced. Cassander. Your sister's loyal servant of Zol first moved his hand, and then this mage completed the invisibility spell in a few seconds under the sudden change of situation. Because Zol's smoke grenade interfered with his vision. Then he climbed onto the high ground gallows at the time, trying to observe the situation. At this point, 
the guild's mages used a weak wind-making spell to blow away the smoke. Then he immediately cast the greasy spell, disrupting the guild mage who was about to cast the see-through invisibility spell. He also used a kill enemy machine on himself, and then a slingshot attack knocked out the guild mage. Bruce. Conquer enemy planes first. Yes, inexperienced mages are busy putting protective magic on themselves, and they accurately determine that the only threat to themselves on the scene is the opponent's caster. Then, by observing the opponent, they determine that they have not used protective magic, and finally use a simple and unadorned enemy fighter to first add a slingshot and knock them down. Bruce. So this is an experienced veteran. There may also be a teacher who has rich experience in fighting. His choice of magic is very simple, without hesitation. His magic is fast, and his gestures and spells are very standard. His Royal Highness Royal Highness Princess picked up a big bargain. Bruce snorted, and my sister actually plans to take such an excellent mage to investigate the disappearance of cats and dogs. Suddenly, Bruce frowned and said, No, such an excellent wizard, why should we investigate the disappearance of cats and dogs? Cassander shrugged his shoulders. Bruce thought for a while before shaking his head and saying, Forget it, maybe he's just interested in my sister's skin. This wizard's technique is very skilled, and I already know how many spells can he cast. Cassander. I don't know. And I feel. He should be deliberately hiding his strength, not using magic missiles or mirror spells that can reflect his magic. The magic missile is a spell that the stronger the mage casts, the more missiles they shoot, and there is no way to deliberately reduce the number of shots to conceal their abilities. Therefore, the caster's strength can be roughly judged by observing the number of missiles. Mirror shadow art is the same, with more powerful mages having more illusions, up to a maximum of eight. Bruce exclaimed, intentionally concealing power. The more you hear it, the more it sounds like my sister and some great mage have teamed up. Isn't that a good thing? The stronger the strength of Royal Highness Princess, the more distracting it will be for us. Maybe it can hold back quite a lot of conservative forces behind your brother. Bruce didn't answer, but turned around and stared out the window, lost in a long thought. On Wang's side, after ending that no fight, no acquaintance with the thief guild, Wang smoothly ran through all the places he believed could be used for setting up large dot scale magic. Finally, he concluded that no one used magic to induce cats and dogs. With this conclusion in mind, Wang led two guards, one bright and one dark, back to the Three Little Pigs Tavern. Oh no, it was three wild boars. After entering, Wang saw the guests in the tavern and hesitated for a moment, almost leaving. Mark pushed him and pointed to the staircase leading to the second floor wing. When he went upstairs, Wang Ma guessed that this was the place where the Royal Highness Princess observed himself in the morning. There is a magical device in the room that allows the people inside to see the front face of the person sitting at the bar. Wang carefully observed the magic device, and then said. So in the morning, Bob, the owner of the tavern, gave me honey beer, and the position of the wine glass was designed to induce me to sit in the right chair. When I sit in the right chair, Royal Highness Princess can look at me at will. Mark. You're absolutely right. Your Highness was here this morning to observe you, and then you walked around to the main entrance through the nearby passage. By the way, if you use this place as a stronghold in the future, you can come in without going through the main entrance of the bar. I'll show you how to get through the side door later. As soon as Mark finished speaking, the wardrobe in the room opened and Elizabeth Langdon walked out of it. Obviously, there is a secret passage leading to other places in the wardrobe. Wang immediately sensed the magical light inside the wardrobe. I was surprised to see Princess Wang and said, Have you finished? It's over, Mark laughed. Let our commander personally come to the conclusion. Wang. There is no sign of magic guiding animals. Then the room quieted down. Elizabeth waited for a moment and said, Is that all? 
Marika appeared from the side door and joined the conversation, we were heavily attacked by the thief guild. Elizabeth was shocked and said, Oh. Wang. Is that my illusion? Do you seem to be looking forward to it? Elizabeth blushed slightly and said, I. I'm concerned about my courtiers. So what's the situation? Marika. We destroyed their attacking forces. The mage efficiently killed the caster on the opposite side with low dot level spells. Wang. I have said that I have a 100% chance of winning a duel in the tower. No mage can beat me, and I am looking forward to competing with other types of spellcasters. Mark. You can't imagine this guy using a slingshot to knock over the opposing mage. Wang. It's a stone throwing rope that has been added to defeat the enemy. There's a big difference. If I don't use the enemy throwing rope, my stone throwing rope survival rate can only be determined by luck. By the way, Marika suddenly interjected, remember in the future, mage, don't give me the enemy fighter first. Also, try not to give it to Michelle. We are always very accurate. Wong gave a thumbs up and said, I understand. Speaking of which, it's starting to feel like a team. Give it a high five, Marika. Marika glanced at Wong with a silly expression and didn't answer. Instead, she asked Elizabeth, how is the pastor's situation? Ah, it's hard to say in a word. Wong, why are you raising your hand? Wong. It's like this. I used up some casting materials during today's battle. Although I still have spare ones, if I keep using them and don't replenish them, they will eventually run out. Elizabeth. Do you want to? Apply for a budget. No, no, lard and the like are actually abundant and don't need to be replenished so quickly. But if a person's eyelashes are not replenished in time, I will soon be unable to use invisibility surgery. Elizabeth raised her forehead. Invisibility. The gel containing eyelashes. Why is there such disgusting casting material? Elizabeth, as a sorcerer, although casting spells does not require prior preparation, there is no shortage of necessary materials. She clearly knows what invisibility requires. Wang. So can your highness provide some eyelashes? Ah. Am I? Wang nodded and said, that's right, I see you have a lot of eyelashes. Cutting them a little bit won't affect your appearance. Moreover, your eyelashes are long and straight, very beautiful, and as a casting material, the effect will be very good. Elizabeth was stunned, her ears bright red and said, You, you, you. I really look good, there's no need to praise me like that. Your eyelashes not only look good, but also have excellent casting effects, Wong repeated. Please make sure to let me cut a little. Ah. Uh, Okay. No good. Wait a minute. Can't Mark's eyelashes work? Mark was eating the honey melon on the table when he suddenly said he was stunned. Ah. Me. No, 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 eyelashes are to prevent sand and dust from blowing into his eyes. Without eyelashes, when the wind blows, I have to close my eyes. Marika. You can close your eyes and let out a roar, just like you did in the battle earlier. Wong looked at Mark and then at Elizabeth and said, It's all right. Anyway, let me take some eyelashes. Elizabeth breathed a sigh of relief. At this moment, the Catman Cave suddenly opened the side door and rushed in. Everyone. I'm back. The druids have nothing to do with the disappearance of the cats and dogs and they have also noticed the disappearance of the cats and dogs and are investigating. Elizabeth exclaimed, Indeed. I knew there must be something fishy about it. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Gathering information in a tavern is a necessary step for adventure. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Gathering information in a tavern is a necessary step for adventure 1. So can we leave this matter to the druids to worry about? After all, 
Elizabeth's principle is to do professional things for professional people, and the druids are obviously the most professional. Michaela shook her head and said, No, the druids have always relied heavily on small animals in the city for intelligence, and stray cats and dogs are the big ones among them. Elizabeth. Do you mean that their intelligence capabilities are no longer sufficient? That's what it means. The cat man spread his hands. Elizabeth. Okay, anyway, we were planning to continue investigating on our own. In the last etiquette class today, Marilyn told me a story about goblins liking to marinate cats and dogs and make them into dry food. Wang. No, they actually prefer mice. What? Mice are the kind of rodents that often steal human food, Wang continued. I know, but eating mice. Forget it, let's not discuss this issue. So the intelligence we've gathered now points to all of this being done by goblins. Wang shook his head and said, No, the intelligence we have only proves that this was not done by magic or druids, and there is still a lack of decisive evidence on who did it. But Marilyn said. Wang interrupted Elizabeth, who is Marilyn? Marika. The accompaniment of the young lady, the daughter of the Baron's family. A vase girl with a big chest and no brain. Elizabeth. Don't judge my friend like that. Even though she doesn't have very good grades. Wang. Does having a large chest mean she also has obvious secondary sexual characteristics? What you care about is this. Elizabeth glared at the wizard and instinctively pressed her right hand onto the collar of the dress. Wang. I'm just confirming. So your highness's friend is not a character who excels in intelligence and extensive knowledge. Yes, Elizabeth hesitated for a moment before nodding. Wang. That's strange. She happened to tell you at this moment that goblins can eat cats, it's like intentionally inducing us. Elizabeth frowned and said, Are you saying? I mean, you should go ask her where she heard this anecdote from. I'll ask tomorrow. Mark. Will we be fine before His Highness receives an answer tomorrow? No, Wang decisively denied this point. Actually, misleading this action itself indicates many problems. What I mean is, assuming this is indeed a misleading action. Elizabeth. Actually, it wasn't done by goblins. Relying solely on misleading this behavior cannot make such a speculation. But we can imagine what we would do if we believed it. Mark. We will. Wang. We will go underground to investigate, won't we? We already had such a plan, and the underground, according to Bob, is full of invisible things. What benefits can we get from inducing us to go underground? Attack. Marika coldly uttered a word. Wang. This is the most likely conclusion. We were already attacked this afternoon, and the person who attacked us said it was a test. But they obviously came with the idea of killing. Is this really a test? No, I'm afraid it would be better if they could get rid of me by the way. Reviewing the details of the afternoon attack, the enemy arranged for an archer upstairs, but the archer did not take action. Why? Because that was prepared for me. Their plan is probably to wait for the mage to remove my protective magic before using the archer to launch a surprise attack. Mark. Wait a minute, you don't have any protective magic on you. Wang. But when I was invisible, I climbed onto the gallows because of the smoke. I couldn't see people on the ground, but I had a view from the roof. I saw the archer. Mark patted his thigh and said, so you blocked their shooting range with the bodies hanging from the gallows. Wang. Yes, because of the enemy mage's wind-making technique, the body swayed left and right, interfering with the archer. But because I was on the ground, I happened to have the enemy mage's field of view. As the wizard spoke, he inserted his finger into the cup in front of Elizabeth and dipped it in water to draw a picture on the table. The height of the gallows, corpses, wooden platforms under the gallows, and the position of enemy mages were simply illustrated by the king. Wang. 
I used the enemy fighter to first boost my slingshot attack. No matter what spell the enemy's mage wants to cast, this attack will inevitably make it difficult for him to focus, so I can easily cast the next spell before him. Marika. But your slingshot solved him. It's very beautiful. Mark. I want to know what the next spell you were planning to cast was. I'm going to use the short blade of ice, also known as the ice arrow. Elizabeth was somewhat disappointed and said, isn't it a magic missile? It's obvious that a magic missile that must hit is more suitable, isn't it? The opponent doesn't have a shield. Wang. But if the opponent has a shield spell that can be quickly triggered, this casting opportunity will be wasted. Marika. Wait a moment. She stared at the wizard intently and said, it sounds like you're on guard against enemy magic items, but... I think you're a habitual guard against trigger spells. And choosing Ice Arrow is mainly because even if it doesn't hit, it will explode and not be completely harmless. Even, you might just aim at the ground beneath the mage's feet. Wang. One more thing, the material of the Ice Arrow is simple, just a little water is enough. So you can spit water in your hand, and other materials need to be taken from the bag. Everyone watched as the wizard fell silent. Elizabeth had an incredulous expression on her face and said, I. I've never thought about things like this before. Did I? I find a particularly skilled spellcaster this time. Marika. You may have found a great mage who has hidden your true strength. Wan looked seriously at the drow elf and said, No, I'm really a magic apprentice of the third ring. I'm not good at lying. Marika. Yes, I can see it. You said you are the third ring, so it should be true. But your subconscious behavior just now was not fake. You are very familiar with the battles between high dot level mages. Wang. As I said from the beginning, I am proficient in all known spells, including the protection system that I cannot cast. So the spell book seized by the opponent's spellcaster is of no use to me. Oh, by the way, can this spell book be sold for some money? Who can help me sell it? As he spoke, he took out a tattered spell book from his dimensional bag. Marika. Let me do it. After handing over the spell book to Marika, Wang hesitated for a moment and asked everyone, where did we just talk about? You are the apprentice of the third ring, Elizabeth said. No, a little earlier. Mark. Are you luring us underground to attack us? Wang snapped his fingers and said, yes. So, Miss Elizabeth, let me ask a question. Is your father's health okay now? Elizabeth. Not very well, but he's in good spirits and doesn't seem like an old man at all. I greeted him before I came over tonight. Wang. How is the security force around him? Elizabeth. My father is a grand knight himself, and most of his attendants are knights. As a spellcaster, my chief mage has mastered the seven rings, and my teacher is a six rings warlock. In addition, the palace grand mage from the eight rings is currently visiting us, and he should be staying for about two months. Wang. Two months. Just as a guest. The princess tilted her head and said, No, it is said that the Kassanian Archaeological Association has discovered some clues, so the Grand Master came to inspect our family's ancient books. Wang. Clues about what? I don't know, the princess shrugged. The wizard's gaze slid over with a straightforward and natural expression. Elizabeth quickly put her hand back in its original position and glared angrily at the king. Wang asked seriously, is this a normal situation? Isn't Marika like this? Shua Air sighed and said, I'm wearing leather armor. Your highness is now wearing a formal dress. I see. Wang nodded and added seriously, I have learned. Catman Michelle. Your highness, if I were you, I would eat him to death now. Elizabeth was shocked and said, eating, eating to death. I just slept with him. The cat man was so excited that his tail was wagging desperately, like a dog. 
Hurry up, you won't lose. Wan. I think it's possible. I'm sure it will greatly enhance my mastery of confusion control spells. The room quieted down again. Under everyone's gaze, the wizard looked puzzled and said, Did I make a mistake? Elizabeth. No. But I warn you, don't daydream about me in the future. Wan. Okay. The wizard's straightforward answer made Elizabeth look conflicted. She pointed to the wizard's face and said, You. I, you. Marika tried to smooth things out and said, Let's get back to business. You just confirmed the security forces around Duke Landon, and then what? Wang. I think the possibility of assassination can be ruled out, which means that the act of usurping the throne will not happen so quickly. Moreover, Considering the current situation, the presence of His Highness can be seen as a means of restraining the first prince and the second prince. That's not to lure the palace underground to eliminate Your Highness. Even if the attack really happens, we will be completely destroyed, and Your Highness will be safely sent back to the ground by the attackers. Marika nodded and said, Your Highness exists, but his strength is weak, which is best for both sides. Wang. Today, the other party also expressed their intention to erase me. Elizabeth. What should we do? We won't continue investigating like this. Marika. After all, it's just a small matter of cats and dogs disappearing. I think we can try removing the active thieves on the shield road. Wang. Excuse me, Marika, are Zol elves common in the city? Marika frowned and said, there was originally one more, but I killed her to complete my revenge. There shouldn't be any more drolls. Wang snapped his fingers and said, Great, then I think we can turn around and lure the snake out of the hole to ambush the enemy who is not favorable to your highness. Mark. Wait a minute. This sounds very unreliable. Wang. Have you forgotten that we have a drow? Our advantage underground is greater than that of the enemy. I mean, knowing that we will be attacked. The drow elf proudly raised her head, looking quite happy with the king's words. The hometown of the drow elves is underground, and they have a strong sense of darkness. The sewer is like daylight to them, and they are extremely familiar with the underground conditions and skilled in fighting against any enemy underground. Marika. It makes sense. In the dark and underground, I am the top hunter. Wang. That's right, everyone else is focused on defense. We can even make a pile of defensive potions. Although I can't cast protective spells, we can use scrolls. Wait for Marika to completely destroy the enemy. No, not all. We need to leave a living mouth for interrogation. Mark slapped hard and said, It sounds a lot more reliable now, go ahead. Man, hi, Trek. Wang looked at the barbarian in confusion and said, What does it mean? What does he say about his name? Mark. Habit is good. This is one of the few common vocabulary words he knows. Man, yes. At this moment, Elizabeth raised her hand and said, Wait a minute, this is just about taking the throne, right? What about the disappearance of the cat and dog? We need to find the mastermind behind it. Wang scratched his head and said, Um. You're right. Let's first calculate the enemy who will seize the throne and let the other side know their strength. Then we can investigate this matter. In order to carry out these plans, we need to find a pastor first. He paused and added, It's best to be a dwarf priest. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Finding Dwarves, First Find Wine. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Finding Dwarves, First Find Wine Elizabeth Don't worry about your dwarf pastor. Today I asked our family's clergy if there were any dwarf pastors, and they thought I had any dissatisfaction with their service. Wang. Your family's religious order. When I entered the city, I saw the spire of the Lancelot Temple. The religious order serving your family comes from the Lord of Life right. 
Yes, Elizabeth nodded. If it weren't for discovering the power of the sorcerer's bloodline, my older brother might have successfully convinced my father to send me to the Lancelot Temple in exchange for the temple's support for the Landon family. Well, because dwarves like to live underground, they don't really join the Church of Lancelot, which also holds the power of the sun. Most of them are craftsmen and followers of the god of creation and destruction, Torek. Wang nodded as he spoke. Elizabeth. What's important is that if I don't force a dwarf priest, I can find a familiar priest in the priesthood. I was originally going to become a spellcaster, so the priesthood also chose a good lady to teach me. Wang. Will this lady allow you to adventure in the sewer? Elizabeth sighed and said, no, yes. She will also report to my father. That's the problem. Wang. Let's think about how to find a dwarf priest. As far as I know, in some big cities, there are dwarf neighborhoods where you can find groups of dwarves and dwarves. And in Langdon's case, at least I didn't see such neighborhoods when I visited the city this afternoon. The big cities you're referring to here are cities like Shallow Water and Monrovia, the knowledgeable drow elf blurted out the names of several big cities. Landon can't compare to them, although Landon may be the largest city in the entire Vesania. Elizabeth said, as the Duke and Elector of Cassania, the city of Landon should be the largest of all duchies, even larger than the Emperor's own city. My two brothers are so eager for the Duke's position because there are rumors outside that the next Emperor may be the Duke of Landon. You look excited, wizard. Is there anything wrong with what I said? Wang Lianlian waved his hand and said, No, no. I just feel like, you see, all these details come together. The Elector is getting old, and everyone knows he may not live long. The Emperor of the Empire is also about to change, and various forces are rubbing their hands together. At this moment, the Grand Master of the Palace came to Langdangling to consult ancient books, because the Archaeological Society had discovered a clue. Hey, this is the beginning of a standard adventure. In the story of a bard, this is like a background introduction before the adventure begins. Mark. And we are preparing to investigate the disappearance of cats and dogs. Wang's enthusiasm visibly extinguished and he said, Oh. Yes, we're looking for a cat. However, in a twinkling of an eye, the enthusiasm flared up again. But we have been attacked once. We are already in the game. Our employer, Her Highness Royal Highness Princess, is the weakest one among all parties. Elizabeth looked at the sky and said in a somewhat disheartened tone, You're right. It's thanks to Bob that we were able to establish this stronghold. For an 18 year old girl, you've done a great job, said Mary Con Wong didn't listen to their conversation at all. He continued on his own, now, as the beginning of a legendary story, there is only one name missing from the big villain. This name should look mysterious and powerful, such as Shadow. Dot. And it needs to be pronounced as Sandu, in devil's language, followed by a devil's definite article, the, which sounds like this. The wizard stopped, took a deep breath, and then said the word. The sand bucket. Mark. The sand bucket, skeptical. Man, the Sandu, angry. Upon seeing this, the cat man happily joined the ranks and said, the sand doe. Marika. Have you had enough fun? Elizabeth shook for a moment, then let go of the hand she had just raised in frustration. This couldn't escape the wanderer's eyes. Your Highness, you wouldn't want to play around together, would you? Elizabeth. I, of course not. I'm not interested in playing this kind of family-like role. Marika's gaze returned to the wizard and she said, Keep talking about the matter and don't play around. Elizabeth. I want to ask, are you proficient in devil's language? Marika frowned, but this was a question from her loyal partner, so she ultimately remained silent. Wang. Of course, many magic books are written in devil's language, especially those evil ancient magic books. In addition, I am also proficient in dragon language and devil's language. Elizabeth. You. 
I just learned dragon language and it has taken up all my time. How could you be so knowledgeable at the age of eighteen? One shrugged and said, from my perspective, it's strange that you can't learn so much knowledge. The drow elf exclaimed, your arrogance will be respected by everyone in my hometown. The prerequisite is that you can protect yourself under the threat of the drow's force. Now, to be honest, you should have been thinking about where to find the dwarves. Ah. Uh. Yes, I mean that. In those truly big cities, not in the rural areas of Cassania, there are dedicated dwarf neighborhoods in the city. Dwarves like to stay in their own communities, even in human cities. But Langdon City doesn't have a dedicated dwarf neighborhood. When I was wandering around the city in the afternoon, I didn't see many dwarves, and my feeling was that there weren't even as many dwarves as orcs in Langdon City. Misha Sarah said, this is because further west of Cassania lies the wilderness where orcs and barbarians roam. Orcs attacking human villages on the border will XX human women, and then half-orcs will be born. Half-orcs are excellent slaves and cannon fodder, and there are even legends in the market that deliberately breed half-orcs for use as slaves. Wang. Thank you for your supplement. In short, if we want to find a dwarf priest, we need to first find a place where dwarves gather in the city. Dwarves are a community-loving creature, and even small groups gather together. There are two things that can attract dwarves. One is dwarf beer brewed from dwarf barley. This is a type of barley that can be grown in the mountains. It is the main food crop for dwarves, and the brewed beer is their blood and life. But this thing is definitely not available in the city of Langdon. Apart from dwarf beer, dwarves also like spirits, especially those with no advantages other than high alcohol content. Elizabeth exclaimed, I thought the second one was an anvil. No, although dwarves are passionate about making goods and smelting iron, that's their business. Do you understand, but beer and spirits are their lives. Wong concluded, so where is the best spirits in the city? Where can we find all the dwarves in the city? If there is a dwarf priest, he must be there too. Mark furrowed his brow. Wong looked at him and said, why do you have this expression? The answer was the drow elf. Because of the best liquor, at the Rat Dad Tavern. We just had a big killing in the square outside the tavern this afternoon. Wang. Will this lead to this tavern not welcoming us? No, but. Do you want to go over now? Wang nodded and said, of course, drinking at night is an essential detail of life for dwarves. If there is a dwarf priest in this city, he must be there now. End of this chapter